Now let's go with me. And as we ride on the journey, we understood what principalities are. We understood their role and what they do. Yeah, we've understood those things. So we, we now know what principalities are. We now know their role and we also know what they do. Now I need you to get on to other things as we carry on from there. I said to you, the exact the will of the devil, the, uh, at, the, at, the dom at the domain where they rule. Number two, they also exhibit their characters around where they rule. Number three, I said, um, principalities, guess what? I said, they exhibit, they manifest their nature where they rule. If there is a principality of alcoholism ruling in a certain place, many people that dwell there that have not been able to overcome the power of the principality come under the subjection of that power. If there's a principality of bloodshed, violence that, that is at a certain domain or a certain community, that a certain principality of violence or bloodshed rules in a certain area, there will be violence and bloodshed in the lives of the people that are within that community or area as, no, as long as they have not broken through or broken out of the hold of that strong man. So we, we talked about about it, yeah, I'll give you a bit of history, a bit of certain areas that I, I said, areas where there is a, and the Southeastern Principality for that is responsible for violence and bloodshed. And then um, you talk, we talk about um, the East Eastern Principality as well, that is for wars and violence as well. We talk about um, certain um, um, communities that you can actually see so much vices going on there. You take a community, you see most of the men there are alcoholics. You take a community, you see there's a lot of prostitution in that particular community. Why? Because that is the spirit that rules that area. So if you live in such a community, you've got to rise up and pray and deal with the spirit in order for you to receive a breakthrough. Now let's get on. And then I, I came back to biblical examples of uh, the life of the of the life of Abraham. I said, when you study Abraham's family, all the first bones in Abraham's family never succeeded the appearance. It was the second bones that took over the succession plan. Somehow, I told you Abraham was not cursed. Abraham can never or was never cursed. Abraham only operated, watch me, there was a spirit or principality that was ruling over his family. The principality that dominated Abraham's family said that no one should be able to, I mean, no firstborn in the family should be able to succeed the father. So what it was happening was the firstborn don't succeed. It was the secondborn that succeeded. So Abraham gave birth to, to his firstborn Ishmael. Ishmael didn't succeed. It was it was it was Isaac, the second born that succeeded. And Isaac gives birth to two children, Esau and and Jacob, Esau did not succeed in being the first one. It was Jacob that succeeded. Jacob gives birth to his first born, Reuben. Reuben didn't succeed. It was Joseph that succeeded. Joseph gives birth to his first born called Manasseh. Manasseh does not succeed. It was Ephraim that succeeded. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not a case. Because Abraham was blessed. He was coming from a blessed family. It was the voice of a principality. It was a principality or a prince of places. The word principality simply means princes of places. Powers that rule places. Powers that rule families. Powers that rule communities. So those powers that rule the family ensure that if you are firstborn, you must not rule. You must not succeed. Are you hearing me? That is why he was the friend of God, but those things that has kept happening. In that family, all the primary wives in Abraham's family were barren. 
Sarah was barren, Rebecca was barren, most of the wives in the, in the family. So imagine you are a woman and you enter such a family. That's why I was saying you need to be very careful when you, if you want to marry, you don't just jump and marry. Why? Because you don't have the slightest idea what is in the other person's family. You've got to check it out. You've got to be careful and check it out what is in the other person's family before you marry. Otherwise, you will every day be praying. You will always be binding the devil. You will always be, be at the prayer mountain, which may not, which could have been saved if you did your due diligence well. You need to check the family that you want to marry from. You are a young man, young woman, whatever. Be careful whether you are not marrying from a family that have got so much demonic things running through the family. It is not just marriage that you want. You must pray that God gives you a good marriage. You, are, you get to a place where you are you, you, you are marrying from a family that is blessed. You are marrying from a family that God actually has his hand on the family. You need that. You need to have that due diligence. Check the background. Ladies and gentlemen, even friendships, I said it yesterday. I said to you, when you check the Hebrew translation of the of the name terror. Terror means delay. Terror means a wanderer. Now, as long as Abraham was with terror, his father, the Bible says that Abraham's life was not moving on. God had to come and tell him, move from your father's house and I will bless you. Why? Terror carried the spirit of delay. He carried the spirit of a wanderer, a wanderer, nothing significant was happening in his life. And, and if you are, you, there are certain people you associate with and nothing significant happens. My God, can I get somebody? You need to identify specifically the right people to associate with. It, I always say this, one of my greatest quotes, the quality of your life is determined by the quality of the people that are associated with you. You, The quality of your life is determined by the quality of the people that are associated with you. If you are surrounded by anointed men, you become anointed. If you are surrounded by wealthy men, you become wealthy. If you are surrounded by poor, broke men, you will definitely be poor. So you need to intelligently and by wisdom surround yourself with the right people. Are you getting me? Surround yourself with the right people, connect yourself with the right people, and you will be able to advance. So, and we came to another man in the name of David. The Bible talks about a man called David in David's family. There was the there was the principality that you see. You cannot tell me David was cursed. That was not a curse in David's family. I mean, people sleeping with people anyhow in his family. It was a force, a spirit, an authority that dominated the family. That any young man that rises up in the family with prominence and a future had to be curtailed by a sexual principality. A sexual principality ruled David's family. Jesse had wives. One day still went out of the family bloodline, out of his wives and got another woman by the name of Nizivir and gave birth to David. David said, in sin did my mother conceive me. David's mother was not officially married. But have you checked somehow? Most of the people whose birth were controversial in the Old Testament rose up to become great men. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That is why the Bible says God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Imagine, think about David. David's background was questionable. He was not a legitimate son. You understand? And when David, David had legitimate sons, David's, David had seven wives. Bathsheba came in as eight. Now, by the time Bathsheba came in, there were sons he had given birth to. So Bathsheba gave birth to the first child, the child died, and gave birth to Solomon. Bathsheba was somebody's wife that David forcefully took. 
So I asked myself the other day, so God, when you are looking for somebody to, to take over the throne from David, why not Abnon? Why not Absalom? Why not someone else other than Bathsheba's son? Bathsheba's son. I mean, we, we all know where Bathsheba came from. We all know how Bathsheba came into being. We all know that the surroundings and, and the, the things surrounding Bathsheba were so questionable. Oh my God, something is, is, is entering my spirit right now. I mean, Bathsheba's son really to sit on the throne? God, there are other legitimate sons right there. But God says, your ways are not my ways and your thoughts are not my thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to come to the place of understanding that, 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 that there are people somehow, if you talk about Japheth, Jephthah, I beg your pardon, Jephthah, the Bible says Jephthah's mother was a prostitute. Oh my God. Jephthah's mother was a prostitute. When God was looking for a deliverer to deliver Israel, now God brings in and they are looking for someone to go to war, to lead them to battle. And they call the son of a prostitute, my God, to, to come and lead them to battle. And, and sometimes you begin to understand the first king of Israel. The Bible says when Saul was told that he was going to be the king, he says, no, it is not possible because I come from the least tribe in Israel, Benjamin. Number two, in the tribe of Benjamin, my family is the poorest. And among the poorest families in Benjamin, which is my family, now in my family, I am the least. It, it, didn't, it didn't add up. It, it didn't make sense and, and all that. And, and even the choice of David as a king, David was not a legitimate son either. Can I tell you something? Can I speak to some single mothers that are listening to me right now? They, hey, single mothers, listen to me. Sometimes people might feel um, that the way you got your son doesn't look all right. The way he, 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 your son came about or your daughter came about doesn't look all right. But I came to tell you, you might be the, the mother of a, of a David that is about to rise. You might be the mother of a Gideon that is about to rise. You might be the mother of a Moses that is about to rise. Uh, people may not acknowledge your son or your daughter, but I came with a word to let you know for God is about to turn things around for your good. For all you know, nobody acknowledges you. It looks like the surroundings concerning your children doesn't look good, but God is about to turn things around for your good. Never let anybody look down on you because of how you got pregnant. Never let anybody look down on you because of your children. For God has a plan. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Just share the link for me. So David's family, there was a sexual principality that was ruling the family. There was a sexual principality that was ruling the family. You need to understand something here, ladies and gentlemen. A sexual principality that was ruling the family. David had seven wives. One day the Bible says all men went to war and David saw a black woman buffing. Bathsheba was a black man. Bathsheba was a Gittite. And Gittite, he, Bathsheba came from a black tribe. His grandfather was Ahitophel. And Ahitophel was a Gittite. And imagine a king. David was a king. David was a prophet. David carried a dual grace. He was a prophet and a king at the same time. And a priest for that matter. Are you hearing me? But the principality that dominated his family ensured that it is him. The same principality that attacked the father attacked him went into Bathsheba, took somebody's wife, finished him, finished her completely, impregnated her, killed the husband. And David grows up. David grows up with children, giving birth. His first son was called Abnon. 
David's first son was called Abnom. Abnom, David's first son, literally slept with his own sister. Who sleeps with his own sister if it is not a spirit? Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you this. Tell yourself, commit to yourself that you will pray for your son. You will pray for your daughter so that the principality that fought you will not fight it. Tell yourself you will make intercession for your children so that they will not have to go through what you went through. You need to tell yourself that my, my daughter will not suffer what I suffered. My son will not suffer what I suffered. You need to declare, make prayer and intercession for your children. Make them your priority. Because you can break through, make it become what? But your children can give you a nightmare. Abnom, David's first son, slept with his own sister. Another son of Jay, David, Absalom, the son of peace, the son of peace, the, the son of peace, he didn't bring peace to the family. He gathered all the father's wives and the father's concubines at the top, all the old women. I mean, who does that? Old woman. He was a young boy. Young boy. He guarded his father's sons, who, were, who could be his, his actually, actually his mothers. Finished, slept with all of them. Slept with all the father's wives and concubines at the top of the palace in the view of entire Israel. And that is a spirit and a force, a power that dominated men in David's family. Today, I lift up prayer on your behalf. Any power dominating your family, any power dominating your children, any power dominating your home, any power dominating your household, I decree and declare by the power of God, let that power be broken in the name of Jesus. Any strange force, strange Order, satanic authority and power that is dominating your life. I decree and declare, let it be broken. 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 It be broken. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Via Mako Shata. Any strange power, any principality that is ruling over your children, say by fire, by fire, any principality that is dominating my family, I cancel it. I break his power in the name of Jesus. Solomon, one of the sons of David, had 300 wives and 700 concubines. 300 wives. That was not a joke. He was an intelligent man. No wonder the Bible calls him the wisest man that ever lived. If you are not wise, you cannot handle 300 women. You, you need a lot of wisdom, high-level wisdom. Even to handle one woman, you need wisdom. How much more? 300. No wonder he was the wisest man that ever lived on the planet Earth. Wise woman, wise man. There is a man I know in Kenya. The man, anytime he, he wanted to build a house, he could buy land. But when he buys land, tries to build a house, it will be taken away from him. He had money. He's a millionaire, but he was rented. One day he called me and told me and said to him, the power that is fighting you is from your family. I want you to go and anoint the land where the next land you buy. He anointed the land. He said he wanted to build in his home first. He anointed the land. And then when they were building, apparently the power, the person causing that was the uncle. Hear me. When they were building the house, when it got to lentil stage, the uncle went there to go and plant some witchcraft things on the land. But because there was the power of God on the land and the land had been anointed, as the man was digging to plant the thing on the ground, on the sides of the building, the man paralyzed. He couldn't walk again. 
So he went there at midnight. He stayed there until 6 a.m. when the, when the con contractors went to site. So in the morning when the, when, the, when, the, when the masons and those contractors went to site to continue their work, guess what? They found this man lying down there, crying. They said, who are you? He says, so the man whose house is this, this is my nephew's house. They said, why are you here? The man said, please call my nephew. I want to talk to him. So they called the nephew. The nephew said, they said, what is it? He says, uh, uh, it's me, your uncle. I am sorry. Forgive me. I have come to plant some things here on this site. I am the reason why you cannot build a house. Anytime you start to build, I'll plant something and the land will be taken away from you. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I don't know what has happened. Now I cannot walk. So he said, now my prophet told me to anoint the land and the person who is responsible for, my, for, for me not being able to own a property shall be um, um, exposed. And now you have been exposed. So the guy calls me and tells me, prophet, this is what has happened. And I told him, listen to me, tell your uncle to row on the land. One acre land, row from up from the from the top to bottom seven times. I said every row one twice is counted as 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 one. So he goes one is one like that two like that. So he rode on the ground. I said for him to be able to walk, that is what I mean. He needs to do that one. God did not tell me to tell him. It was not God that told me. I just wanted that uncle to be punished. I wanted him to see that it is. I wanted him to see pain. I wanted his whole body to be scratched so that by the next time when he even comes back in the next life, he will not do that to any man again. The man was rolling on the floor. I said, is he rolling? I said, put the, put the, put the WhatsApp on video. He, he rolled and rolled and rolled. I said, get hot water and pour it on him. Say, my prophet, he's going to burn. I said, that is the prophetic instruction. Pour hot water on him. They get hot water, they pour on him. He started shaking. I said, yes, God punished the devil. I said, now lift him. Let me pray for him. All those things I was doing, there was nothing. It was not part of it. It was any, it was no prophetic instruction. I was just trying to punish the guy. See, sometimes and you need to punish some of these people. After that, then I said, let me pray for him. It was the prayer that I was going to do, um, bring the healing. It was not the rolling on the floor and all those drama. That was, that was, that was nothing. But I just wanted the man to see that, you see, the same way he has made the man lose a lot of money through last, I wanted him to be punished. So I prayed for him and I said, lift him up. And he started, he started walking again. But up to now, he has been limping, has not been able to walk straight. Let me tell you, anybody who is responsible for your pain, your struggle, I decree and declare, let judgment from heaven strike them. In the name of Jesus, may Jehovah God release judgment upon their lives by the power of the Holy Ghost. Any wicked man, wicked woman around your life, may Jehovah expose them. May Jehovah expose them. May Jehovah expose them. May Jehovah expose them. Somebody shall fire. Anybody that is supposed that is fighting you, who is a witch or wizard, may God release his judgment upon them in the name of Jesus. Now let's go. Another thing that principalities cause, they cause delay in your life. Principalities cause, they call disintegration of churches. Disintegration of churches. Let me tell you, if like I was talking about marine spirits, if your church is close to a river, most of the time, if you are not careful, eh? The church will break down. A sexual principality will hit you. If you know a church that is close to a river, check. Somehow the members in the church, choir member will finish guitar at the basses. The keyboardist will finish the usher. They, they keep finishing each other. Why? Because the power that rules that area is a marine power that causes sexual immorality. So they are believers, all right, but there is a dominating force that is frustrating their lives. A dominating force. Ladies and gentlemen, this thing, I wish I can open your head and put it in, is because it's so serious. It doesn't matter whether you are born again or born against. 
check any chair that is close to a river or water body. They just finish each other, finish each other. If you're a man of God and you pass that just close to a river, be careful, you must pray more because even you yourself, the demon can hit you. And you yourself, you start finishing the members, the, the sons and daughters. Somebody say mercy. Yes, so you need to pray hard. Next point. They cause disunity in families and discord. Principalities, they make this, they cause disunity. Sister is not agreeing with sister. Brother is fighting uncle. So much discord. You see, there is a principality of the South that causes alcoholism and laziness. Any place in the South, Southern people that live in the South, close, close, they cause, they, there's a principality of the South causes, that causes alcoholism and laziness. Laziness. How to overcome principalities. Let me just leave those ones. Let's go how to overcome. Number one, like I always say, the first way of overcoming in every principality is to exercise your authority. Exercise your spiritual authority over them. Exercise your spiritual authority over them. The Bible says God has given us power to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us. Are you hearing me? There are powers and forces that contend against us by you. The Bible says for we are seated with Christ in heavenly places far above what? Every principality and power. Ephesians. Let me read it for you. Ephesians 1.21. Hear the word of the Lord. He says, For, say, which he produced in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his runs right hand side in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and dominion, whether angelic or human, far above every name that is mentioned, above every title that, but, that can be conferred. Now you go to Ephesians 2. God has raised us far above. Far above, say, I am seated above every principality and power. I need you to understand, yes, you may be seated above them, but you need to exercise your authority over them. You need to exercise your authority. You see, there are some people, just let's bring it to corporate. Let's bring it to the offices as an example. There are some managers, they don't behave like managers. Their, their subordinates are even more powerful than them. Yeah? Some of you, you are, you are supposed to dominate every power, every principality. So you must exercise your authority over them. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, it says, And he raised us up together with him and seated with him in heavenly places. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. The Bible says we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Somebody say, I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. Say it with conviction that you mean it. You need to understand. You say, I am seated with Christ in heavenly places above sickness, above cancer, above diabetes, above blood pressure. I am seated with Christ above my raised spirits, above witches and wizards. The, 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 the chapter one says, above every other name that is that is named, anything that you can name, you are above it. I am seated with Christ, far above every principality and power. Hey, nako shetele katua laba. Hey, matone me katia. Hey, it is under my feet, declare it. It is under your feet, declare it. It is under my feet, declare it. You are above it. You, you are above it. You are above it. In the name of Jesus, you are above. It. You are above every principality, you are above every power. 
in the name of Jesus. Hey, somebody shout fire. Shout I'm above every principality. I'm above every power in the name of Jesus. I'm above every principality. I'm above every power in the name of Jesus. Exercise your authority over them. Number two, engage in strong, aggressive prayers. Yeah, strong, aggressive prayers. Strong, aggressive prayers. Strong, aggressive prayers. Engage in strong, aggressive prayers. Strong, aggressive prayers. Engage, the Bible says in James chapter 5, verse 16, B, the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man makes tremendous power available that is dynamic in his work. The, the rule is simple, get amplified by it, so that you can be able to quote scriptures like the way they are written in the original Greek, um, Aramic, and Hebrew. The Bible says, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man makes dynamic, makes tremendous power available that is dynamic in its working. When you engage in effectual fervent aggressive prayers, the Bible says it releases tremendous power. Power, may tremendous power be released. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. May tremendous power be released in the the name of Jesus, may God activate tremendous power on your behalf as you pray. Tremendous power is released. When the tremendous power is able to control and destroy the strong man that rules over your family, the principality, that rules over your family, the principality, that rules over your home and your house. There is a street in Holland called Fresh Tuabeth. I, I don't, and it's, 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 it's that it's got your accent, so I'm not going to be able to pronounce it well. There's a street in Holland. And on that street for the over 20 years now, there is no company that is established on that street that succeeds. A street, a certain street in Holland, in the Netherlands. If you set up a company there, somehow it collapses. If you said for a few years in success and stuff, the principality that dwell on that street says no company should succeed here. You need to rise up through prayer and be able to deal with it. Get into a pray a time of prayer and fasting and engage in prayer. The Bible says in Mark 1 9, the Bible says there are some things that go not except prayer and fasting. There are some things they can never leave unless you engage in prayer and fasting. They only go by prayer and fasting. 
they only go by what? By prayer and fasting. You need to engage in prayer and fasting. You need to learn how to engage in prayer and fasting. And deal with the power that dominates your family. Deal with the principality that rules your home. Rise up as a child of God, as a gatekeeper for the family. You see, it will be an indictment on you as a Christian that prays in tongues. You have been a Christian for 10 years, 5 years, 3 years, whatever years. And some of these things to still continue in your family. You would have been a failure Christian. You would have been a failure as a Christian. You must rise up as a champion and as a gatekeeper and deal with that force and tell them, yes, it happened when you were not there. But now that you are there, you are putting a stop to it. People used to just get pregnant anyhow in your family, but you are putting a stop to it. People used to die prematurely in the family, but now you are putting a stop to it. People, there was used to be sexual immorality in the family, but now because you are a child of God, you are rising and putting a stop to it. You must rise up and put an end, declare, yes, the last generation that suffered was you, your generation. Your children shall not go through what you went through. Your children shall not suffer what you suffered. Your children must not cry like the way you cried. Your children must not marry a wrong woman like the way you married. Your children must not marry some mumu husband like you. Declare that the cycle must break. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Mazokolo shalalehe zabrahandi yaba zagadaed. Brazua bralalande zagadonde. Malazua bralus kata. Hey, somebody shall fire. Number four. Decide to move in the opposite direction of the demands of the principality in your family or your area. What do I say? Decide to move in the opposite direction of the demands of the principality in your area. For instance, if the principality in your area demands that everybody becomes alcoholic, you tell yourself you will not drink. You will not drink. If the demands of the principality in your family says everybody should not marry, tell yourself you, you have a white wedding. I decide and make a conscious decision that you go in the opposite direction of the, of the demands of that principality. Did you hear that? Decide that you, 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 you will get married. If nobody has ever been married, decide to break the cycle. Decide to go in the opposite direction. You are not stopping until you get there. If nobody has built a house, tell yourself you build a house. Set a record. Be carry the anointing of a breaker. Last week I talked about it, the breaker's anointing. Desi make a conscious decision that you know what it is. How many of you remember what the scripture says? I wish, I wish, okay, I'm, I'm on Zoom, but I mean, but but not many of you are under. I mean, what, what does the scripture say in Job chapter 22, verses 28 from the, the original? What does the scripture say? The Bible says, you shall decide and declare. Decide first and declare a thing and it will happen. Decide it and declare and it will happen. For the, the cycle for manifestation, decision, declaration, manifestation. You decide it, you declare it, it manifests. That's what scripture says. You shall decide and declare a thing and it will manifest unto you. You decide it first. You declare it and it manifests. You must declare and de decide that, you know what? Me, Thelma, I will, I will own properties. I know people may not. Let me tell you, let me tell you. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen. Those of you ladies that are waiting for your husbands or your wives or your men to build a house for you. Buy a car for you. Buy whatever for you. Hey, hey. My friend, tell yourself God will bless you with your own money. Your own money. Your own money. Money. Your own cash. Your own 
do sika pesa your own money so that you will be you will build house by yourself you will build you will buy car you are just waiting you are just waiting every now and then you are just waiting you pray some of you are waiting to marry rich men you are waiting to marry you are waiting to get a sponsor from america <laughs> the other day i was telling a certain lady how many of us how many of you remember when we were young we used to write pen pals those days we used to write pen pals you go and get the newspaper look through if you see some pen pal when i came when i traveled abroad for the first time i'm like hey some of these pen pals where you used to write to some of them they were even broke that <laughs> The way we broke than us. Some of the pen pals, some of the, some of those wazungus you people are looking for, they are broke, broke, broke. They are broke to a extent that even people call them broker. Some of those pen pals are broke for sure. See, when you when you travel abroad, you realize that ah, not all that glitters is gold. Some of those you, you used to write pempa, you, you, you have to lie. You're, you are an orphan. Oh my God, God forgive us. You'll be lying. Your father is there. <laughs> hey, one time my auntie saw one of the letters. Oh my God, the way I was beating, I was beating properly. Properly. Because me, I mean, people were writing, so we also needed to write. I was beaten properly. I was beaten left, right, center. Hey, what do you like? They started telling me, what do you, the first question, do you like anything? When they saw the letter, me, I had not seen, they've seen the letter. Yes, do you like anything in this house? Do you, do you, do you eat well? Do, I mean, I said this, I didn't know where the questions were coming from. Now the last question is, so where from this letter? Why are you telling people your father is dead? <laughs> you are telling people your father is dead. Your mother is not working. I mean, I mean, I was, we used to lie to these Wazungu so that you, they, they will send you things from, from, from America. I was beaten. Say you are, you are killing people in this house just because you, you are, you've seen a pen pal. That was the last time I wrote those pen pals. Sometimes I look back and say, is that why my father died daily? Because I started killing him. I started killing him with my mouth even before he died. Is that is we start writing papers and telling people that our father is dead when he is the man was not even there. Imagine, you know. So you need to come to the place. You need to pray that you are going the opposite direction of what the principality in your family is saying. The principality in your family says nobody has built a house. You say you build a house. The principality in your family says nobody has, you declare you are going in the opposite direction. You own a car, you be, decide that what no one has ever done in your family, you shall be the first to do it. Decide that. Make it a conscious decision. Are you hearing me? Yes. Last point, number six. Last point. Give an offering, a sacrificial seed to counter the voice of that principality. Give a sacrificial seed. When, 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 when Gideon wanted to break the altars in his father's house, he was, he was asked to take the second bullock that is 70 years old. And then that was an equivalent minimum, was an equivalent of about $500. That was what he was asked to take a sacrifice to break the altars that ran through the father's home. You need to activate a sacrificial seed on the altar of God to counter the voice of your principality. Counter the voice. Counter the voice. Now we are going to lift up our voices in prayer. You've got quite a good amount of time. We are going to lift up our voice in prayer. I need you to share the link. 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 
Share the link. Share the link. Share the link. Share the link for me. Share the link for me. Click on the share button. 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 Marco Zala Bala Bala Baya. Brazone me catololo bos cabrandis calabrante ateleles. Ivalua cabrandos que te limi azone me cabal. We are going to lift up our voices in prayer. I told you yesterday what God will do for you, He has already done. The more reason why we pray too much about these family issues is because of our children. Yeah, that you, you, you is because of our, our future, number one, and our children, number two. That in the next 10 years, some, some evil principality shall not strike you down. That the powers and evil forces shall not deal with you. That the Lord shall cover you and preserve you. We want to lift up our voices in prayer. Mako shala brazika la bandes. Vekeneme abradus kalabrasimi nimi kata. Rapa palwa kato shelelebes kabrante tenimi atata. I want you to lift up your voice right here and begin to declare right now. I want you to first identify the principality in your home identify that power in your home and declare right now in the name of Jesus that by the power of the Holy Ghost, that principality is destroyed right now in the name of the Lord. You are declaring in the mighty name of Jesus, every principality assigned to frustrate, dominate, and torment your family. By the power of the Holy Ghost, you break their hold from your life in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Are you ready? Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. Shall we say every principality assigned to frustrate my destiny. Every principality dominating my family. I declare their assignment has come to an end. I break the hold of every principality right now. Mako Shala Bazanta. Say in the name of Jesus. Every principality, every dominating spirit that rules my family, principality of strange diseases, principality of sicknesses, principality of antimare powers. Principality that causes anti-marriage tendencies. Principalities that causes poverty. Lift up your voice. I palua cabranta talia brasonta. I palala la brasala la branta talia braco shala la branta baya. Rapa palia bracolo lobo shata. Mi antotolia braconda batua la la branta. I palua cabanta palia brasone and a mecapa. Rapa palia braco shala la branta tan dibi azote. A pelele catolo lobo shabaya. Rapa palia braconda da batata. A pelia braconda branta ta. Via palua cabranta ta la la basha. A telele shabanda branta. Rapa pele becatone me cabranta. A pala basua la branta talia bracosa. A pandibi. Anto Tolua Braco Lana Banta Rapalia Braco Shalala Brantata Pella Penda Beda Brantata Rapalia Braco Shalala Branta Vina Maton Talala Brantaba Rapalia Braco Shalala Brantabaya Pella Capanda Bazua Lana Baha Abranta Talia Braco Shalala Branta Fella Le Bosca Pantemia Etelia Braconda Batua Atata Pella Lebeca Brantabaya Palia bracosa, talia brasanta, pelele besta branta, 
Bariya, Rabba Bariya, Brakonda Bantaba, Apala Bantaba Luaka Brantaba, Apala Lele Shuala Brantaba, Aparia Braconda Brashanta, Apala Becatolo Lola Bosha, Abranta Talia Braconda da Batata, Apala Lele Caprantata, 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 Apalia Braconda Batua Lala Brantavaya, Apala Lele Capanda da Bashua Antaya, Etenda Lele Caprantata, Rapalia Braconda Bashua Antaya. E palua capranta tana na makosa, aparia bracola brantavaya, apandi bi antos catelia brashua atata, apada bacolele de bos caprantavaya, rapalia braconda batota, e pelebe capanda ba, 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 rabala branta tandi bi capranta, apalia bracosa la la branta. Rebebe kalose aziminimi antabaya. Rete tetelia braconda batata. Ependebe kazua la brantata. Rapali mi ampalua cabranta. Rebepelelebes cabranta. Rapalia braconda da bashanta. Epelebe de bende bedua cabranta. Randa da bacosata. 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 Lift up your voice and declare Matoto Azanana Namatanta Ipalua Cabratanta. Any force, any power that is dominating my family. Today we declare, let the assignment be destroyed. Let the assignment be destroyed. Let the assignment be destroyed. Apala Branta Branta Palia Pratata. Ipala la brasha la la branta pa, rapa pa la branta ta la branta pa, rapa la branta ta, rapa liya brako sha la la branta, apala le baska branta ba, rapa nda branta ta liya brako sha ta, ibalua ka branta ta liya brasho te, ezele be katoni mi azia, apalia brako la branta branta balua ka branta, esene ne ne me ka branta ba ya, yemi. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Let me say this. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. The devil in the book of Genesis was called a serpent. When the devil came in the book of Genesis, the devil was called a serpent. By the time the devil graduates from Genesis to Revelation, through, through from Genesis. I mean, Exodus all the way through Malachi to New Testament to Matthew, Mark. By the time the devil is seen in Revelation, the devil was called the old dragon. There are certain things, if you don't deal with it now, it will become an old dragon that will be difficult for you to deal with. Yeah. Some of you, you are potential wives, but you have not dealt with the principality, so you are still where you are. Some of you, you are potential landlords, but you have not dealt with the principality, so you are still where you are. You need to rise up and deal with the principality that contends with you. Mm. Hear me. If you don't deal with certain things now, your son will have to come and deal with it. Your, brat, your, your daughter will have to come and deal with it. Your, 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 other, your, your, your sister's siblings, all of them, the, the next generation will come and deal with it. But I want to lift up our voice in prayer. I want to declare, never again, never again. I stand as the gatekeeper of my family. Never again. Never again. You are presenting yourself before God. You are declaring right now in the name of Jesus. You are commanding and declaring any cycle that goes on in your family, you are declaring it is terminated in the name of Jesus. Excuse me. You are terminating every satanic cycle. That cycle that hovers over your children, 
That cycle that hovers over your hope. Now we are lifting up our voices in prayer. We are declaring right now by the power of the Holy Ghost that no satanic force, no demonic stronghold shall frustrate our families. Any power that dominates our families, our tribes. Some of you, you, it is said that your tribes women, they are like this. Your tribes men, they are like this. Whatever is said in your country of origin, in your town where you come from, in the city where you live, any principality that dominates people from that area, you are declaring it is silence, it is aborted. Lift up your voice right now. Lift up your voice right now. Mako shalala brante. Wala la brante, pele geden dele bedos kabrante tene ne me kabrata, raba balua kabrante talia brashone ne ne me kaba, apalia brakonda na bazia la brante, pele bende be kolua brashua anta, pele lele kazua la brante ta, rapalia brakosha la la brantos gadibia, tene ne ne me kabrante ta ta, abrante talia brakosha la la brante, pele brakonda batota. Pelebe atua la branta pa rapa palia braconda da bashaya atena ne nebre antos cabranta taya evalua kralos katea atena me abranta in the name of Jesus we decree every power authority that rules every principality that rules my community my my neighborhood, my city, we declare their influence is nullified. We declare we are we are we declare safety, preservation over our lives in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Hear me and hear me well. This is God's servant, the prophet David Uso. La Gatimini mi antos. Grace gedelelebe abrataya. Rantos katibi alabrose alia atata. I break every stronghold from your background. And I decree and declare, you are liberated. 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 Somebody shout, I'm liberated. Powers from my family shall not bring me down. Powers from my father's house shall not bring me down. Powers from my mother's house shall not bring me down. I decree and declare, I'm liberated. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. 